everybody. Thank you for coming and being here tonight. Um, to start off, uh, a little announcement. I have asked and she has accepted uh, Hacksaw. Jenny has decided to come on as my partner for the Cackling Cauldron. So we are now officially running this whole shenanigan and show together. Um, and then as our guests tonight, we have uh, Sangra Vampira, who is a member of the Dark Forces stream team with myself. And the lovely angelic tofu who comes to my rescue almost every week. <laughs> Hello. Hey. <laughs> um. So tonight, um, we are oh we are discussing uh, a favorite historical um person of mine, uh, and she's always kind of I've always kind of had my eye on her, um, Elizabeth Bathory, who. In short, just a quick little tidbit about her has been called the most notorious uh, serial killer in history, uh, was accused of killing like 600 women and doing strange and horrendous things with them and their bloods and their bodies and <laughs> everything else. Um, so she showed up in pop culture and movies, in horror stories and horror movies. Um, do you have a pet on your on your lap, or is that just a fuzzy pillow? That's a fuzzy pillow. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> like, are you talking to me? Because I don't think he looks like a pillow, but okay. <laughs> he looks very sleepy, though. Yeah. As he yawns, yes. <laughs> um, and so, uh, I, I, it's, it's my birthday today, and I was like, who do I, what do I want to talk about on my birthday? <laughs> talk about something really bloody. Wait a second. I know. Um. So we're going to try and separate some of the fact from fiction here tonight and and what we can. It's actually really difficult, as we discovered, to do this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and I even had trouble finding actual books published on her. Um, I unfortunately did not get a chance to go out to the university yesterday. I've had just so much crammed into this week. It was unbelievable. Um, Nobody talks about their own birth on their birthdays. Um, my mother went what? into silent labor. I, I don't get it. <laughs> my mother went into silent labor. I almost popped out in a cab. That's there you go. I've talked about birth on a birthday. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, and so, yeah, um, I was like searching online and I was trying to find stuff and um, she, there is just a, not a lot of, of fact, uh, versus like, even from the places you would turn to like, um, history res resources and stuff like that. Um, and then when I went to the library here locally, they're like, yeah, we have one book that she, that she's like a chapter in and we don't have it right now. It's checked out. Um, oh so the book looked really interesting though. So I did put a hold on it cause it's about like female killers in history and stuff like that. Um, and then, uh, so the librarian was really nice. Greetings from beyond the grave. Thanks for the host, Vampira, and for the scares. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. It's totally fine. Um, everyone's like, Jesus. I know it's really loud when everything else is quiet. Um... <laughs> And uh, found a couple books uh, that were published in the 70s, I think, were like the last ones that were published regarding her. Um, so that's kind of where I hit my wall. And I found a few decent looking articles that I was able to scary skeletons and shivers down your spine. Shrieking skulls will shock your soul and seal your doom tonight. Thank you for that raid, Carnival. <laughs> Hello. Welcome in, everyone. Um... But yeah, so that's kind of where I hit the wall. So I found a few articles that seemed to be sort of reasonable, but they all sound off quite on the same sort of thing. Um, now, Jenny, do you want to sort of share about what you kind of your experience with trying to find stuff was? Mine has been the exact same. I'm going to turn to my page where I wrote all my notes. Mm -hmm. At the very top is not a lot of known facts. So what am I? Everything I'm going to say is speculation on my part. Just, <laughs> just so you know, it's the little like fine print at the bottom. Yeah, so I have to say it's just kind of like this is what everybody's saying. This is kind of like what I feel 
happened mm-hmm. or what yeah. I think my interpretation of what went down is, but it's so hard to find actual facts. Mm-hmm. Everything from like her birthday, like how old she was when she got married, how many people she killed, every single one of these things, um, like what year she got married, how old she was, is different from article to article, um, from resource to resource. So everything is kind of going to be playing it loose, kind of like a timeline of what's going on, but we don't know exactly when, because it was so long ago and there are very few things written about it that happened at the time. A lot of stuff was written afterwards, which is a lot of like hearsay and and folk tales and stuff. So mm-hmm. we don't really know for sure any facts when it comes to this one. Yeah. So there's a, there's a lot of a lot of speculation. And that's the thing is because of of the time it was as well as from what we're gonna talk about, like the whole probability of why this whole like why she was uh, investigated and whatnot actually happened um, is probably a lot of information and a lot of truth was probably hidden away. And also, uh, you know, she wasn't a man. Like, they don't care. <laughs> she wasn't a dude in the in the 1500s. So. No, I almost feel like we could find more information about her husband's military conquests than we could probably. her alleged murders. Yeah. Probably, yeah. I'm just turning down the notification volumes right now, guys, so hopefully... And turning off my phone. Hopefully that uh, will be a little more quiet for everyone because my desktop is turned all the way up so that you guys can hear these wonderful women because if I try and like, mess with their volume right now, it's going to be a whole big thing because I forgot to do that beforehand. Um, like I said, it's a whole learning process, this thing, and I'm slowly getting it down to a smoother one. But there'll be more stuff happening as Jenny and I brainstorm what we want to do mm-hmm. with everything. Um, did you set up the Twitter account or just I do have a Twitter account um it is there's nothing posted on it yet yeah but um so it is um am I allowed to take yeah, it absolutely yeah oh wait I think you're no you're gonna have to get permitted okay <laughs> sorry Trayden, well can you I'm gonna that? finish typing it <laughs> and then I'll wait to hit enter yeah uh okay there there you the go. This uh, okay. this Twitter has nope, it didn't work. Nope, nope. Sorry, uh, hold on. That's uh, okay. Um, yeah, I think I, I remember something. what it is. Uh, okay. Hopefully, you got the right one because I changed the name of this Twitter like a million times today. Was it the last <laughs> one we decided on? Um, the one that you said was taken already. It's the one previous to that. That okay. one. So. Uh, Waiting, see if I see anything. Nope, that is not it. That was Shit. taken by someone else oh, who balls. also has a podcast that died in 2015, just like balls. many, many podcasts have. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, it is twitter.com slash cackling cauldron. The cauldron is spelled C A U L D R N. Yeah. Because it turns out you can only have 15 characters in a Twitter username. Who knew? Slash cackling C A L D R N. Oh. Um, there's no <laughs> C-A-U-L that's, that's D-R-N right, right? right? D-R-N yeah yay go team yay okay there's nothing posted <laughs> there but you know it's there, there if you want to give be. it a follow there will uh, be yeah I mean I can post a quick thing mm-hmm. right now even and then we'll have an actual tweet that you guys can share if you want to um so yeah we're starting to actually make social media make this mm-hmm. a real thing so uh, yeah very exciting um now uh, i'm just gonna go around then from there so that's our big disclaimer this evening we did the best we yeah. could <laughs> we <tried. laughs> um vampira do you want to tell us a little bit about where you stand with bathory and sort of Greetings from beyond the <laughs> um it comes it, it's the same exactly mm-hmm. like you both said honestly it's even there's tons of different movies that depict her life in different ways as mm-hmm. well. And, uh, I mean, <laughs> online, there's just so many different, um, different versions of, of what people think as well. So, mm-hmm. but it's, it's still always very, um, and like you said, it's, it's been used in moves, movies and, uh, mm-hmm. shows. And so that's all I could find as well. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. It's uh it's definitely like very, very um hazy on, on any actual fact and detail. Um Angelic, I know you were on last minute. Um so I uh, I don't know how much time you really had to go and take a peek about what you could find about her. But was there anything that really just kind of stood out that jumped out of you that you were just like, oh, wow, that's crazy or amazing or I love that? Um, That she bathed in the blood of her victims to stay youthful and how that's not really true, but I still think it's badass. (laughs) Yeah, that's like the biggest myth about her because you can't actually do that because the blood's going to coagulate. However, painting blood onto your face and your skin, not uncommon. The Um, the last movie I watched it she talked about using herbs and that's how her water looked red. Oh, which movie was that one? That was the Bathory, the blood countess yes, or countess um, of blood. I was actually going to bring up, I talked to Jenny about this beforehand after we're done with the cast here. Um, I'll probably put that movie on in my rabbit room. And if anyone wants to come hang out and watch that and kind of chat about it, it was really good. I watched it a couple few months ago, I believe. Um, so it's uh that will be an option for you guys afterwards if you would like to do that i will put links in chat and i will tweet them out as well um but yeah that's uh that's the one of the stories that was herbs in the in the bathtub that made it look look red um but that is like the most common like when you think of her especially because her last name is bathory right so i mean they (laughs) it's nice to just be like oh yeah bathory and she bathed in blood um <laughs> you okay? Russell's like, hmm. Things are happening. I'm I have interest in things. Oh, don't jump. Oh. It wasn't that loud actually. That's good. <laughs> no, not like last week he fell right on his face. Oh right, I forgot. Oh <laughs> poor Russell. Um okay, so now that I when I look over this, um so I'm just gonna go over the notes here. Oh no, sorry, that was I kinda Got sidetracked partway through it and was into Vlad Tepe stuff <laughs> earlier this evening. Um, so what I found is she was born in like the mid 1500s. I couldn't really pin down an exact date either. Um, yeah, they were all over the place. Um, the most common date I saw uh, was August 7th, 1560. That's exactly what I've got in front of me as well. <laughs> um, and uh in hungary and uh she um was born into a very like prominent family like um and they lived in a part of transylvania and they controlled a large part of it from what i could i gather um which is cool because transylvania i mean this is hilarious that both her and vlad um came out of the same area which just kind of speaks to maybe some of the traditions and culture that they had back then and the way they dealt with death and uh, being a ruling family um in times of war and whatnot um but she ended up being married when she was like 14 or something like that i think 14 or 15 again we're not we don't have any concrete dates And her husband. I have the number fifteen, and then scribbled out fourteen. Yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> literally everything is different. So just take her, like, give or take a year. Yeah, basically, from that. she okay. was around that age. Um, and uh, she ended up marrying Count F- Ferenz Nadasti. I'm not. I'm probably not pronouncing that remotely correctly. Um, <laughs> and his family was a lower station than hers. So she moved into this castle that he gifted or his family gifted to her. Um, and, and she refused to change her last name because she's like, no, your, your family's a lower station than mine. So he ended up changing his last name to Bathory, which I found very interesting and pretty awesome that she was like, no, I, no, I'm not doing that. No, I'm, I'm fine who I am. You're beneath me. Like, you're marrying up here. You can change your name. Um, so that definitely was a, a very neat aspect that I, I really adored. Oh, oh, okay. Hold on one second, guys. Sorry. No problem. I'm getting um, saying to you. And yeah. Handed a plate with candles on it. Aww. More That's cheesecake, so guys. 
You gotta <laughs> eat it. Hey, oh my God, Happy birthday. <laughs> that's true it's a donor's responsibility to be embarrassing I do i have a, do i get a fork i you oh, know I've, I've eaten cheesecake I, without a fork before it's do i get a deal. fork I, a and I, didn't... <laughs> I know i know now I eat the oh. yeah uh, i've eaten half a cheesecake today yeah honestly yeah like i'm proud of you yeah Those it's been a slow process right but it's been happening <laughs> But no, I am, I'm with you there. I thought it was pretty badass that she's like, no, you're going to take my name. Um, and, and maybe he did it intentionally. Like, hey, maybe people will take me more seriously that, if I'm associated too, to this right? like, ruling class. But I mean, no matter which way you slice that, that's a win for her. I felt so conflicted with all of this because I'm always like, okay, what she did was terrible. But yeah, she's such a badass. What she did was awful. But look at that coat of arms. She was the worst. <laughs> such a badass i like i can't i can't really like decide how i feel about it but yeah that that's a difficult thing because she did do a lot of things that for a woman um i mean god even for a woman these days yeah (laughs) yeah if she had a reputation let's say um yeah and and uh you know but at the same time you know there's no doubt in my mind that she probably tortured some of her servants mm-hmm. or had her other oh, servants man. torture her, some of her servants, Yeah, you know, um, for shits and giggles. Maybe she was just really angry. Maybe she was a little bit crazy. Who knows? You know, um, maybe she needed to keep all these people in line. We don't really know the reason of it because we don't have like written records from her point of view. There's like no journals yeah. really or anything that I could. Apparently there are some journals and letters, but the, um, so we'll get into it later, but there is a journal. Um, no one seems to be able to find that, but there are letters, um, that have been kept away. And I think they're in like a Hungarian museum somewhere where there's like, these stay locked and they haven't brought them out or anything to look at them, decide if they're real, anything like that, but they do exist. See, this little part of me that when I went to university the first time, my major was, like, anthropology and archaeology. It's like, get the letters! Get the letters! Find the letters! See the letters! You need to read the yeah. letters! Like, eh. I can just, like, hope that they are in good hands and they're not falling apart or anything like that. Right. But, yeah, it's kind of crazy that there's, like, such a stigma and lore about her that I wonder if stuff is being, like, hidden away oh. to keep her from being boring. Like, Maybe. she's gotta be great yeah. for tourism yeah you know? oh absolutely infatuated with her lore that would be me <laughs> like, so Torture. obsessed with her as a person even I though know, she's the worst i know 100 percent. speaking of lore actually i don't know if any of you got a chance to watch that but one of the episodes of the podcast lore oh um sorry one second nikki's yelling at me um do you want to actually <laughs> take that for a sec jenny i have to move myself for a moment Yeah, no problem. Um, So I probably the first thing I had actually listened to or watched in regards to like actual information about Mm -hmm. Bathory was the lore podcast. I think it's episode 23 is like Wicked Women or something Mm -hmm. like that. It's all about uh, Elizabeth Bathory. And he did a really, really good job of doing what I think to be like some actual research. There's stuff that he said in there that I have not found anywhere else and like i've Mm -hmm. been scrolling through the internet forever looking and there's nothing um but you can listen to the lore episode and there's also um the lore tv show that's up on amazon so if you're like Mm -hmm. you're an amazon prime subscriber first of all use that free scrub free sub right now second of all (laughs) um you can watch lore for free on amazon prime video and and check it out so it was pretty good it was a little intense but then also like graphically i was like well that's intense but at the same time there's other things like one of the things she was known for was sewing her victims we'll say or whatever because some of them were servants some of them were noble girls apparently or whatever but sewing their mouths shut and then asking them to talk but um the, the way they did it i was like that's not very good Like, that doesn't look very good at all. Like, it looks really not fake. And, like, it's just big loose things over here. And I was just like, okay, whatever. 
But like the whole value isn't exactly high. Well, no, but. that's exactly it. But um, <laughs> um <laughs> thank you for that that comment, Gord. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, it, it definitely worth worth a watch. Just a quick like little episode or whatever, and um, then uh, she comes up. Oh God, where's my list of? I have a list that I made of the pop culture ones. Uh, do, 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 here we go. Excuse me, sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, there is the um, the um, the metal band that has named themselves after her that's taken their name, uh, Bathory, which is uh, one of the ways she's inspired in pop culture. Um, there is a slasher film from 2006 called, called stay alive which actually came up a few times um oh god this isn't my finished list i'm sorry um where did i put it my apologies i've got like I'm gonna I, jump in with uh, yeah. my favorite one yes cruelty and the beast the album by cradle of filth yeah well, we're talking about metal <laughs> yes that, that was, was my that- I said this yesterday. I was like, baby's first metal album, and everyone just laughed at me. But it's true. That was my first experience with metal, and I don't care. I still like Cradle of Filth. Cruelty and the Beast was like basically the telling of the story of Elizabeth Bathory. Obviously, very like exaggerated, more so than it already has been. But I thought that was pretty good. Um, there's so many movies and stuff, though. I didn't even know where to start. I found one. I was going to save this for later, but I'm going to say it now. Okay. CBC Radio had a drama program that was like a radio drama called Nightfall. Oh, my God. In 1980. Yes. yes. And oh they did God. a two-part dramatization of Elizabeth Bathory's like, I do life remember and Nightfall, death. but um, getting cheesecake all over my Oh, so there's a little Canadian tidbit for you. Yeah. I, I don't think I recall hearing that, but I do remember the show. Yeah, I'm going to have to see if I can find it mm-hmm. online or anything. Because CBC keeps, like, wonderful archives and records. Oh, so my I'm God. Like, everything go is back so and find perfect. That. It's so wonderful. That way they, like, st- store all their old shows and everything. Bathory Rocks. Tax dollars at work. <laughs> um, okay. Thanks, um, Osab, for filling in the chat for us. Yeah, we're talking about Elizabeth Bathory. Noble woman, possible serial killer, most definitely tortures some people at the very least. Definitely tortured some people. Um, may have bathed in their blood. May have bathed in their blood. Scientifically impossible. I mean, it would just be chunky. <laughs> By the time you filled up a bathtub full of blood, it would yeah. be chunky. I mean, like, I wonder, too, if she just, like, watered it down. Put some blood maybe into an actual bath. Like a like, cup of blood or something like that. You don't gotta kill someone for that, though. Yeah, <laughs> just exactly. be like, hey, you. I own you. Uh oh. Some of your blood. Just a little. Oh no. Okay. Um, so where do we leave off? So she got married mm-hmm. in uh, 1575. She could have been 14. She could have been 15. Um, and from there moved into a giant castle that was uh owned by her husband, but he gave it to her mm-hmm. as her wedding gift. So that was basically as a um what do they call that? Dowry? Uh yeah, like a dowry. So as part of their um, contract for their marriage, it was actually given to her. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, so I did student. read something oh. about her having a child before she got married. Mm. Mm-hmm. There are rumors of this. Yeah, that she's from like a peasant boy. Yeah, that she had a child before she was married. And the child was either given away to an aunt or hers or died. Yeah. But there's oh, so there's like so many what ifs related to this. Mm-hmm. But I read that her husband had this man tortured and castrated, then killed for knocking her up because they got engaged when she was like 10 or 11, uh-huh. got married when she was 14, 15. She had a kid when she was 13. Mm-hmm. And yeah. So apparently he was like, hey, that's mine. Excuse me. You and, get no uh, more balls. Gave, yeah, castrated the guy uh, before murdering him. So it seems like that's something that the two of them had in common, which I found <laughs> really fascinating. Um, what is it right here? Some of the um, information I found stated that she may have learned her cruelty from him. 
Yeah. Um, other people say that she didn't start to be cruel until after he had died. I think she'd probably go more cruel mm -hmm. afterwards. But, I mean, it's almost like a tragic story, too, because there's so many things written out there about um, how she saw a lot of torture happen when she was younger. So in her early life, the one description that I read was she saw people cut open a horse, live horse, shove a man inside, alive, sew it back up, and uh, just waited until both the horse and the man, kicking and screaming, both died. Uh, I think you see that at a young age, and you're definitely, I mean, no mm -hmm. matter what age you are, you're definitely going to be a little bit messed up by it. So the fact that she saw a lot of that stuff happen mm -hmm. because of her family and the nobility and the mm -hmm. things that they were doing people in line could have started something of like almost like a fetish that your brain is developing mm -hmm. and you see these things and it's just a connection um that it seems to me like that might be the case with mm -hmm. her because there are other things that are saying that you know well purportedly that um that her torture also went hand in hand with like giant orgy and stuff hey. so i'm kind of wondering if that might have been the case between her husband and her. Mm, yeah, that's true. Um, as well as, that's a good point there that um, Sab brings up in chat that there were a few things about her beating someone so brutally she had to change her clothes, so that might have contributed to the bathing and blood rumor. Mm. Which was heard um, as well. Um, so this is where it sort of comes down to me. It was, okay, so she, she married this guy, he went off to war, and she was left to run this the whole giant household and deal with everything back at home. And, and, uh, and when I say household, I don't just mean household. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, and she was a woman and they're like, he was gone, gone. And she was a woman of a certain station above him. So she wanted things done a certain way, but yet she still had to sort of do it all herself. And, uh, they were sort of reasoning behind, like, um, you and I were discussing this the other day, Jenny, why about why she had to be so tough? Yeah, I f feel like I'm very conflicted with, again, kind of like this, she was terrible, but also a badass. It's also like, she was very well off, so very privileged, but at the same time, a woman in power who knew her sexuality, took a bunch of lovers and mm -hmm. knew exactly what she wanted in life, that that does not go unnoticed in mm -hmm. the 1500s, where obviously women aren't like that. So um, I think she kind of, she had to work hard and be more tough, mm -hmm. almost like that 80s idea of a businesswoman where you had to have the shoulder pads and you had to be you know, standing up to everybody, speaking loudly, standing with like power stance all the time in order to get taken seriously, mm -hmm. um, that it's possible that her violence stemmed from having to kind of put down the hammer when it comes to mm -hmm. people doing what she says or, you know, the people that she hired, maybe they're not doing a good enough job. So she's the man of the household right now and she's got to make them listen. Yeah. Um, I can see you nodding, Vampire. Did you have uh, sort of some stuff to add to that, maybe? Uh, well, I mean, there's, there's other, blah. The other things that I researched, too, was that not only that, but back then there was a lot of abuse and torture. It was a well-known fact mm -hmm. for anything. And superstition and all of that would make people go crazy. And the the faith back then it was very heavy handed as well. So, I mean, I had watching the the movie that you're gonna watch later tonight mm -hmm. after the stream uh, made me pick up one of my books that I have in my library called uh, When Battered Women Kill. And mm -hmm. so I think that because she was um, around torture and all of that, then this book might be helpful for explaining her behavior yeah. those are my thoughts <laughs> no that's something i never even thought of note here and, and, oh shoot i did the thing again Cram. there's the giant <laughs> note oh, galaxy Woo! everyone gets my to see my, i forgot i can't they need to go on this screen <laughs> 
Okay. Um. <laughs> One thing I did see a bunch of was apparently for her daughter's birthday, I mean, uh, wedding, uh, there were torture and blood orgies. At her daughter's happy wedding? Birthday. Oh, yes. Yeah, happy wedding. Um, yeah, yeah the, she just kind of like every celebration, every big party or, you know, wedding, birthday, things like that, that she would be like, well, we're celebrating time for some torture, guys. And <laughs> Yeah, kind of what I was saying earlier, that the, the torture and her sexuality went hand often in hand. To go hand in hand. Yeah. yeah, which I think is why in like modern portrayals of her or things that are based off of Bathory's experiences that a lot of it is that she's super sexy. Mm-hmm. Like one of my favorite ones is in Hostel 2. There's a scene where oh, there's yeah. just this like really super hot lady uh, who is like into torturing people is creating her own Elizabeth Bathory bloodbath experience. But, like, the way they filmed it and framed everything, she was, like, I think just this, like, embodiment of sexuality. And she didn't seem like a crazy, scary person who wants to murder somebody or Mm -hmm. chase someone down or shoot someone in the forest like the rest of the movie was. She was just in it for this, like, singular experience of, like, the best bath that she's ever had in her life so. <laughs> uh, but a lot of times yeah I feel like the sexuality and her torture it's mm-hmm. like all rolled in one uh, for that um, I would like to add that so making someone scared or their fear uh, like another vampire mentioned about adrenaline rush and how if someone is really scared they have that adrenaline rush to survive so that their blood also changes yes and I mean, just that alone, that excitement of making someone feel so out of control and you're in control of them 100% is also another sexually mm. arousing kind of thing as well. So, I mean, given the fact that maybe she was battered, who knows, that rage and that adrenaline rush to have that control is also another thing and kind of what reminds me of hostel in that scene that you were talking about mm-hmm. is the control is that they have that this person can't do anything well yeah and that yeah. that is it and as uh, tra- a lot of tr- um you know battered women or or men or whatever it whatever gender they are they um their desire for control after they are out of a relationship like that and i i'm i'm speaking from the classes i took as well as my own personal experience on this you desire to control things so much because you had literally no control for so long and it were it's really hard and that's how a lot of us develop ptsd and anxiety is because we can't actually control the whole world but oh my god we want to we want to know everything we want to be able to have everything planned out and have end results and when things happen without us being you know knowing about it and surprise us then it, it really can um throw us off our game so there is i mean and everything comes down too to the you know the type of person she was and what happened to her life and everything afterwards and how that would have worked in her own mental health and everything like that i mean you know there could be other stuff there that we can't even possibly know about and then those things affect her in those ways we can only Mm -hmm. speculate which is what this evening is all about apparently (laughs) yeah like especially back then when mental health things were obviously Mm -hmm. not um not ever looked at you know it's either it's just or you're you're possessed or you're thrown (laughs) in some you know church nunnery forever where they they like you know try and beat the devil out of you okay um so do we want to start getting into kind of the the end game yeah for Bathory and where things went from there yeah absolutely um, okay so her husband away for war uh that's called the long war go figure it was long um and <laughs> he passes away and in his will he is basically telling this uh i think cousin of his named um georgie thurzo georgie spelt with a two y's g-y-o-r-g-y um sounds like orgy that Sorry. you're yeah <laughs> georgie uh georgie thurzo that he is in charge of the family now mm-hmm. so instead of i passed away my wife is an adult my kids are all adults 
and my wife owns a castle. She's clearly been taken care of for this entire long war. Uh, he entrusts this other guy to be in charge. And while he is in charge, there start to be more and more rumors of the torture and deaths happening at the castle because she went from killing small, unknown people from little tiny villages to torturing and killing uh, people who are children of lesser nobles. Mm -hmm. And even I read that there was one lady who was like a traveling singer uh, who was super popular, Mm -hmm. went missing. And Mm -hmm. that's kind of what kicked it all off is that, okay, now it's not just these nobodies. Now we care because rich lady has gone missing. So let's investigate. So um, the, uh, I can't remember his name, but there was a guy in charge of like the equivalent of the police uh, and Georgie start to investigate and they are calling in people who are supposed witnesses, except for there are so many, <laughs> they called like something like 300 people yeah. and they're all like, okay, maybe I've been involved in this. I don't want to get caught. What am I going to say? So um, I think it's pretty obvious that they've, been telling all sorts of stories that would probably range from true to complete and absolute lies to try to keep themselves out of trouble. Um, yeah, it, it, are so let's talk. A, oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Sorry, I uh, just they do want to talk about the numbers for that. Well, yeah, so I'm just looking at what I had. Oh, sorry, microphone. Um, for some of the numbers, and like the thing is, the witnesses themselves had oh, I think it's this many. Like, someone would say, oh, it was, like, 30 or 40 people. Someone would be like, it's 50 or 60 people. And it was supposed that she was actually caught in the act when they went in uh, to, to, to arrest her, apparently. Um, that's something that came up a lot of times. Um, but just with a servant, or she had one of her servants was, was uh, uh, torturing someone, I believe. Um, uh, and then there... The castle personnel, so again, not actually accounts from, you know, um, officials or anything like that. This is coming from within, you know, gossip within the castle. Say anywhere from 100 to 200 bodies were removed from the castle. Um, And and, uh, there's there's only one witness who spoke at the trial who mentioned there was a book she kept a list of over 650 50 victims names in but the the 650 could not be uh ever ever actually proven um, yeah it was never collaborated yeah. and no one ever brought that book in as yeah, and it evidence. was one person who said this uh, yeah. there was this book right and, and Susanna is that her name I didn't I didn't I think that. it was yeah <laughs> I was like that name just stands out. <laughs> um oh yeah this here I'm sorry I'm just pulling up something else really quickly it says reportedly the location of the diaries is unknown but the 32 red letters written by Bathory are stored in the Hungarian archive states or state archives in, in Budapest um so yeah like the numbers are just completely all over the place yeah Um, on the low end i think there was like 34 uh all the way up to um 250 or 650 rather but she was only oh yeah (laughs) yeah on the low end and this is me completely being devil's advocate here and saying like she did absolutely nothing she's completely innocent on the low end over the span of time let's say that she was supposedly murdering all these people. Well, that could just be she's just not disposing of dead staff properly. Yeah, uh, that would be from 1590 to 1609, they say, is the span of her crimes. Well, exactly. That's like 20 years. I mean, they didn't live very is long it, back then. There was lots of rancid true, disease. You know? um, but yeah, the, like, some were buried in the church graveyard. Some were buried elsewhere on the gardens. Um, but that they, I think actually charged her with 80 deaths. Yeah, uh, it, was less, it was less than 100. That was what the actual charge ended up being. I remember yeah. that, yeah. Um, but yeah, one person reported 50, another reported 30. Mm-hmm. I think they just added those together. We're like, sure, 80 that does it. fine. Because yeah. um, the thing is, she was never actually tried. She never made it to a trial. Mm-hmm. 
And this is where we get into Mm -hmm. the fun stuff. So, um, this guy, Georgie Thurzo, I am under the impression that that this may have been a frame up. This is, again, everything is speculation, but this is me speculating (laughs) that. So, with her husband dying, he puts Georgie in charge. Georgie's like, heck yeah, I'm going to get all of this, except for maybe she wills stuff to her kids or whatever. So, I think get ahead of yourself a little and you're like maybe you don't really like that she still thinks she's in charge when you've been told by her husband that you're in charge again speculation (laughs) Um, but the fact that she never went to trial just really Mm -hmm. stood out for me because i was reading that if she did go to trial she was tried and convicted and executed that the Mm -hmm. the state the equivalent of the states of the area that they were in would take possession of the castle and it would be theirs instead of his Mm -hmm. So what they did instead was uh, lock her away. Literally. What they did. Not even. Yeah, it's insane. Was brick her up in a room in her home with a tiny little hole. No windows for food. And then she died. I think what, it was three another, years? Four years? Three or four years after being literally bricked into a tower. <laughs> um, she complained one night that she had cold hands and the guard was like, Cool. Shut up. Go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> so she went to bed and never woke up. She was found that day uh, having passed away at the age of, oh, what was it? 54. Which is, uh, in by the way, heckin' old, though. Yeah. So, days. I mean, maybe there's something you said about bathing in blood. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I found that source that I was telling you about, this with this artist that in her, her website is called the rejectedprincesses.com. And um, she did all the research on Elizabeth Bathory. And I'm just going to put this link into the chat right now. Um, she does this. Uh, this. P- oh, whoops. Crap. Right. I have I spilled a giant cup of coffee in my keyboard in my stream earlier today. And I'm using my old keyboard, which some of the buttons have broken on. Because the other one is yelling, ah, at me every time I put it in a chat box. (laughs) Um, So she did, like, a lot of research. Like, she's got a lot of points here, and she's got a lot of stuff. And she's like, you know, this is possible. This isn't possible. So this is what I was telling you about. Finally found it, by the way, today. Took me a while to get back to where it was. Um, And if you go all the way down near the bottom... In conclusion, her, her in conclusion, the aristocrats is what she says. Um, <laughs> but she uh, she believes that Elizabeth Bathory is innocent. Um, and again, the overwhelming impression one gets from reading all these documents <laughs> and act I do not recommend you do in one sitting. By the way, <laughs> is that she was a take no crap kind of lady. Her husband was off at war. And she had to manage an incredible amount of stuff in an absence even before he died. Thousands of servants with 30 bodies, 30 to 50 bodies. Seems plausible. Um, governing the local populace, handling an amount of property second to none. And so she needed everyone to know one thing around her and that she was the head bitch in charge and she had no time for your shit. <laughs> Which is exactly kind of what you were saying, Jenny, is that that's what she needed to get across. Mm-hmm. Um, so the, I, I really enjoyed reading and like she did, like this woman did the research and I tried to kind of go off of what she did so I could try and find some actual solid facts and stuff like that, uh, which was still very difficult to do. Um, but if you want to read a little more in depth about it, um, uh, then, you know, you definitely check out that article, it, it, even though it's not by like a, uh, academic resource per se she definitely took her time and did the research to to do it to to because she wanted to be able to portray what she felt her actual opinion of elizabeth bathory was in the the painting that she did of her which is mm-hmm. interesting because i look at it and i don't see like elizabeth bathory at all when i look at that painting right i don't know if you guys do <laughs> i agree no, I with you. Like, yeah super I, I sexy feel- badass dark reds yeah right that's what we think of right when we think of her this, this dark sort of vampiric woman in red gowns and, you know, looking like she's absolutely about to murder you. Um, but 
that's after this this woman did all of her or, or sorry this artist did all of her their research you know they um the opinion they ca- came to was completely different and that's what they portrayed then in in the artwork which is very interesting to me and i'm really glad i was able to track that back down again because i was so upset when i had lo- I'd closed it and was talking to you um but yeah she got just shut in there shut in there bricked all in and just here you go you can you know do your business in there and just deal with it and i can't believe she actually yeah. lasted that long yeah with like no fresh air yeah and- it's yeah confinement is a hard thing um i just want to note what osab said in uh chat that um there was something about the hungarian king i think it was Matthias or something Uh like that owing the family a ton of money and so that would also support a frame up because the deal was she's going to be executed but the family uh and georgie are saying well no we want to just take her away to a nunnery or something like that so she can live out the rest of her life they don't really want to piss off her family because they own everything um so they said okay she can go if my debt is cleared so they cleared this guy's debt and let her go live the rest of her life in a tower instead of being executed and losing the family property huh that's an interesting (laughs) aspect and would make a lot of sense honestly especially if she like was able to keep that kind of power after her husband died because she didn't remarry or anything correct no, it just took a lot of lovers. Just took but... a lot of lovers. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, there was something that I I, I read in the in that the the uh, Forgotten Princesses um, website there, um, and I don't know if it was in regards to her or someone else in the whole group of people surrounding her about bisexuality. So I mean, you know, if she was really doing her own thing out there, I would not have been surprised. Um, and then yeah, like having a woman in power like that and for so long and and not remarrying or anything else you know that's they don't like that at all i mean elizabeth had a hard enough time over in england (laughs) (laughs) not getting married you know they were a lot uh more um god what's the word i'm looking for um i don't want to say barbaric (laughs) that's the only one word that's coming to mind but it's not the word i'm thinking of but they were a lot uh loosely less you know looser morals perhaps over in the east let's say um about how they handled things um you know they had especially uh, you know in the area of transylvania uh with a place that had like vlad and everything like that but um she's just so intriguing and i just want to keep learning more about her and try and actually pin down some actual facts which is like so hard so myself i will be personally going out to you vic to go get those books because i'm very curious to Mm -hmm. see what they have to say about her especially because they are written back in the 70s and stuff like that like that's going to be a different time to start with yeah (laughs) in regard to in regard to writing about a woman like this and the point of view is really intriguing to me about how it's going to be taken as well as i've got that book on hold um where she's mentioned in a chapter of um now were there any other sort of like uh pop culture references that we had found that really stood out oh i have one because we've been talking about this recently so let's see what did i write i want to read it because I was at work and I was bored and I just wrote <laughs> things down and was like, okay, this will work. Um, here we go. Coolest torture is covering people in honey so they get attacked by bees. Inspiration for Candyman? Question mark. Also, apparently, husband sent her romantic letters on new torture techniques. But I just want to say, I think that's really cool. Very inventive. Very adorable, you two. Keep doing your thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this don't send me that chocolate crap. Just send yeah. me some new torture techniques. <laughs> I don't want chocolate. I want long winded article or letters about how to torture people. <laughs> um, yeah, there is actually um, here. Th- she's got a list of like some of the things that she was um, accused of, of or the, that were, or, or the witnesses had said. Um, and <laughs> Strangled a servant to death with a silk scarf, a harem technique known as the Turkish way, which, by the way, one of my closest wow. friends is Turkish, and I had sent her a message about this, but we had 
she's actually in New York City right now, so she's got a different phone going right now. So it, the messages didn't go through. But I was like, so tell me about this Turkish way, choking people <laughs> with scarves, huh? <laughs> But it does seem very classy. It does, right? And she's like, uh, um, yeah, uh, burning, uh, sticking. Yeah, if you, it gets very graphic, I'm just going to say, um, about the the details, which I don't really want to talk about too much on some place here. But, like, they are all listed, by the way, in that article. So just, like, a warning for that for you guys, please. Um, she does... Um, she does she preemptive preempts it with let's make it a drinking game take a shot every time you're grossed out please don't (laughs) (laughs) um i mean i could get the vodka uh, please don't (laughs) oh my favorite was about the eating people she would make them eat their own butts (laughs) um hold on here it is here um I didn't see that one. Yeah, really force them to it. cook and eat their own flesh, usually from the buttocks, or make sausages and serve it to our guests. Yep. I'm not going to be lewd. I'm just not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to stop. You're hurting, Angelic. I can feel it. <laughs> just like, yeah, I don't know. Your inner seven year old comes out and is just like, yeah, we'll eat your own butt, except yeah. I actually eat my I'm shorts. Be a little Bart Simpson. <laughs> Um, was there anything that you wanted to add, Vampira, to any of this? You're you're literally just like uh, the film that you're gonna watch literally is summarizes everything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is and, and their own speculation. Yeah, uh, I believe the actress was the one that played um in the girl with the dragon tattoo, the the original uh, version, not the North American version. Maybe that's why she looks familiar um i haven't actually seen the north american version because the original version was so good i, I love it yeah mm-hmm. Christopher Nolan. yeah or not Christopher Nolan. Uh, the other one anyway <laughs> um no r.i.p they're never making any more of those i'm really sad <laughs> the american ones i really liked it they got me with that nine inch nails in the um trailer Oh, did they? I'll have, to check, I'll have to check them out, the ones that are made, but um, if you haven't watched the original ones that are in in Swedish. Thank you. <laughs> 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 then I highly recommend you two because they are so good. But there's a very hefty trigger warning on there Oof, for yeah. rape. Okay. They're my favorite books, but I can never recommend them to anyone. No. <laughs> no. Um, have you read... Uh, I know this is kind of a topic, but I was really good. Have you read the latest installment in the Girl series? I refuse to read any more than the first three that were by the original writer. That's After fair. his son took over, he was not supposed to. He mm. was told not to. That's and fair. he did, and he had money, that, so I that, just didn't. That's fair. That's fair. But, uh, yeah, I just remember, like, everyone was really hyped at the bookstore when I worked there, and I was kind of like, um do we have anything else about this lovely lady that we would like to say tonight i don't think so i just really wanted to talk about bees Uh, (laughs) (laughs) i have my own little list of things that were based off of her experiences slash life slash stories and lore um the blood queen 2014 comic by Dynamite Entertainment. I uh, is based on it. have that on my to-be-read list. Yeah, it's really gorgeous. Um, the story is mm-hmm. meh, but it's Dynamite. They just do licensed stuff a lot. Yeah. Um, Hellboy, Blood and Iron, yes, the anime series. That's right. And then the last one, one that I have not seen, but I didn't know was actually influenced by her in any way, is Neon Demon. Oh, I've her. seen Neon, Neon Demon. Demon. It's messed up. Well, it's I'm going to so have to watch that tonight, because I think it's on Amazon Prime now. Um, I believe it's somewhere. But yeah, we actually watched it, a few of us, in one of my movie nights, actually. It was recommended to me by a friend of mine down in Arkansas, when I believe. This galaxy? I don't know, but I remember tuning out part of the movie, <laughs> coming back and going, what the hell? Yeah, I heard that from a lot of people. The review was like, I did not care until the end, that it was really, really crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you have to about kind that, of boring? Right. No. The uh, what I love about that film is that it's uh, the lights, just the way that they set it mm-hmm. up. Like for me being behind the scenes on film sets, mm-hmm. I could just picture in my head what they had to do 
and it was just so beautiful. Cinematically, it was gorgeous to look yeah. at, one hundred percent. If if you take nothing else from it, it was pretty as hell. When yes. it comes to Wending Rump movies, that's all I take from it. It's like <laughs> they always have such a great aesthetic, but mm-hmm. not always a great movie. Yeah, exactly. Um. So yes, again, we will be. I will be putting that uh, Bathory, the Countess of Blood, on in my rabbit room. Yes, you do need to watch it, Betty. Um, probably in about hmm, ten minutes here. Um, I will tweet out the link. Um, can I get you to do that actually from the Cackling Cauldron? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Once I've got it all set up, and I just want to say thank you to Vampira for coming. And hanging out with us tonight, we'd love to have you back again. Absolutely, we're, we're like I said, we're starting Thank to you. roll a little more, and and now we have some time. We had some time to kind of like brainstorm and and talk about how what we want to do and everything. And as well, again, Angelic, thank you for coming and saving my butt once more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, do we want to do a quick announcement about yes. Um, casting? Yes. Um, so okay, you go ahead and do all of those things. All right. I'm going to post a thing up on Twitter for it as well on the Cackling mm-hmm. Cauldron Twitter that you guys can please retweet once it does pop up. But um, we are starting a casting call for Cackling Cauldron. So um, Graves and I are always going to be here kind of as your hosts of the show, but we want to bring on two lovely ladies each time who are interested in it can be horror, um, the paranormal. We want to have people who are into true crime. Um, no matter what your favorite thing is when it comes to like the darker side of the world, we want to know. So if you want to be involved in any way, you can send us a message, tell us the kind of stuff you're into. Mm-hmm. And then as we plan out the weeks, we'll start contacting people and be like, hey, if you want to come in, uh, all you have to do is be available 7 p.m. That's PST on Thursdays mm-hmm. so that we can just pull you in there. We'll obviously give you a heads up on your week so you don't have to be available every single thursday or anything like that Uh, and i also want to point out that uh this is absolutely an inclusive thing we do want to have ladies on but that includes trans and non-binary so if you're feeling femme if you are a trans lady you're absolutely welcome there's absolutely no reason to feel um afraid to be a part of this Mm -hmm. it's going to be women of all ages colors sizes etc no boys Um, allowed so no boys allowed (laughs) No, sorry. <laughs> no. We want you in the chat, though. We we want to hear you. We yeah. love you. We want yeah. your input. But it's a good time for us to just like let loose and talk about the stuff we like exactly. together as kind of a a girly bonding experience. But yes. we want to still like have with your blood. input and everything. Like that. Girly <laughs> bonding experience, yeah, but with blood. Let's just all be blood <laughs> and that chunky, chunky blood. Okay. Oh my god. Anyway, anyway, that. Oh. Sorry, I'm just gonna go speaking of blood baths, this is one of the things that like I've had uh like the charcoal bath bombs, but I really, really wanna get one of the ones that make your bath that look like blood. I just really want one so bad. I gotta they do should it. Combine that with the ones that have algae in it that make your bath like thicker. Ew, no, slime. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, god, no, 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 slime. no, no. Mm-mm-mm. But that would be like the authentic experience. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Back to what you were saying less... before, Jenny. Please, before I hurl. No, I was just gonna say on that note. On back. that really <laughs> gross note, um, <laughs> we'll probably wrap it up. But I'm gonna post uh, the link to the rabbit on uh, Cackling Cauldron. So that's Twitter.com/slash Cackling Cauldron with no N. It's C A U L D R N. Um, and that's everything, I think. One more thing, though. Um, do we want to mention about what the next one is? Because we've got the movie oh, yeah. this Saturday. This one's going to be a little bit different. Yes. So this Saturday, because uh, we today. haven't got time for it yet, but we are going to be um, posting that up on Twitter as yeah. well. We are having our first uh, Cackling Cauldron movie night, which is called Witch and Bitch. Um, so everyone welcome in this one. You can jump on Rabbit, and we're going to be watching Mandy. This time around, Panis Cosmatos, wonderful Canadian director. Uh, it is not his first movie, it's his second, but it has Nicolas Cage in it. So if you're like me and you're a big Nicolas Cage fan, uh, this one is not to be missed. It's absolutely wild. And we're going to get together and watch that. And then on the following Thursday, we are going to be having a discussion of it. So yep. you can jump in chat, tell us everything. Because we wanted to do like movie discussion nights, but we were like, there's no real way to do this. Like our Sabrina night. We, yeah. we were like, yeah, let's talk about Sabrina. Oh, wait, we can't talk about that because nobody's it's seen it. New and no one's seen it. <laughs> yeah. We can't talk about this. Okay, well, we'll have to go back to it. So this way, 
people can watch the movie with us yeah. and then take part in the discussion in the chat while we're talking mm-hmm. and we can say things that we're not worried we're going to spoil stuff yeah and <laughs> that's going to basically work is at the end of every month we will watch a movie or whatnot together and then the following thursday so the first thursday of the next month uh pretty it'll, well you know it may vary it'll be saturday bit. thursday yeah, saturday yeah. thursday basically and then uh we will discuss the movie that we watched as a group so mm-hmm. that's I'm coming so excited up. about that one yes and mandy has been hyped up so much i have not seen it but manny's been hyped up so So much in the horror community for the entirety of this year pretty much yeah if for only one reason watch it because cheddar goblin is a thing cheddar goblin is the thing (laughs) i have seen these pictures and i need to know more cheddar goblin and it looks like it's straight out of the 80s and i love it Mm -hmm. that's beautiful yeah so we look forward to seeing you guys there absolutely Um, everything will get put